The outbreak of the novel COVID-19 pandemic has exposed most economies in the world, inclusive of low- and middle-income countries like Ghana. The novel coronavirus pandemic is expected to have a significant adverse impact on the global economy for the next three years. Governments around the world are implementing various physical measures to mitigate the adverse effects and provide relief for businesses and households to make life comfortable. Therefore, as efforts to find physical measures in mitigating the several effects, Government of Ghana partnered faith-based organizations which the Ghana Pentecostal and Charismatic Council GPCC is part to train the youth in Tibet skills including plasterboard, biofill digester, three D epoxy, beads making, catering, soap making. and interior decoration so that the Ghanaian youth can be self-reliant. In Ghana, poverty and attempts at alleviating it is an issue that has continued to generate interest of national government and international agencies. The church, in spite of its central mandate of being spiritual in evangelism, has continued to partner in the fight against poverty to accomplish Jesus Christ's mission to wholeheartedly serve and minister to all, both the rich and the poor of the world. Knowing the role of the church in the fight to alleviate poverty in Ghana, we spoke to the president of the Ghana Pentecostal and Charismatic Council, GPCC, to know how this partnership has been helpful to them in accomplishing the Jesus Christ mission. In the year 2018, the government through the National Entrepreneurship and Innovation Program signed a pact with all the faith-based institutions to see how far we can partner and train our young people to be of service to the nation. In the year 2020, we know what happened, the COVID, and we saw how our youth were exposed, most of them without skills, without any training, without a job, and so many things happened. And by December, the government released some funds to all the faith big institutions, including GPCC, to train our teaming youth. And I believe that this has gone so well. Government over the years and church leaders or faith leaders have been working, complementing one another. We are not competing. If you see a lot of hospitals, a lot of schools, and other national institutions. They were brought in to the system by the churches and government has collaborated with them very well. And I believe that the church has got so many men and women of integrity who love the nation. And the various governments' main intention is to help develop our human resources to make our people live better. If you want something to succeed, you implement it, but then you monitor it and evaluate it and see the shortfalls and then get it back again in a better footing. So to me, this should not be an event. It's a process. Now that we have finished this first one, and to me, it has been extremely successful, there should be an opportunity for us to have a roundtable discussions with NEIP and the other stakeholders and do a proper evaluation and assessment and see our weaknesses and our strengths short force and see how we can do it better. So to me, 
This is just a starter and it's a game changer between the government and the churches. Such a relationship should not end, but should continue. We must first of all appreciate the government, especially through the Ministry of Finance, for this innovation. We must also appreciate the facilitators. The timing was so short, but they have put in everything to make this a success. We should also appreciate the GPCC staff who have helped for us to come that far. I'm also calling on all heads of churches to stand behind the government if his intention is for the betterment of Ghana. We should not make this partisan. We should not make it sound as if it is political. Government is about the people. The church is about the people. So that we should work together to make sure that Ghana becomes the beneficiary. And our young men and women who without this training will have been lingering, doing nothing, becomes the greatest people to enjoy this blessing. In the midst of extreme poverty in Ghana is the major challenge of youth unemployment occasioned by several factors, including many years of low economic growth, rapid growth of the youth population, general labor market constraints, low level of education, lack of employable skills and limited labor market experience. According to the Ghana Statistical Service Labor Force Survey Report 2018, more than 1.2 million persons from 15 years and older are unemployed, representing the total unemployment rate of 11.9% of this number. About 714,916 are females, representing 57.2%, and 535,997 for males, representing 42.8%. While the unemployment challenge affects the whole labor force, its impact is particularly severe on the youth. Hence, seeks to mobilize and leverage on the existing Tibet infrastructure of our member churches across the country to equip thousands of youth in Ghana with high-quality entrepreneurship-based employable vocational and technical skills in partnership with Government of Ghana in the short, medium and long term. This, we believe, would reduce high rate of youth unemployment in the country to boost the economy and make them self-reliant. As part of the COVID-19 uh, finding solutions, um, government was really in partnership with the faith-based organizations. If you look at the, at a time when the country went on lockdown, you could see that the faith-based organizations played really critical role in assisting government to be able to provide some form of relief to uh, the various communities in which these faith-based organizations find themselves. That is why uh, after the lockdown, government was looking at how can we reach out to the most vulnerable, uh, the youth who have been put out of work, those with no skills, who find it even difficult to feed. How do we reach out to them to be able to provide some skills for them and also provide some level of support for them to be able to earn a living? So through that, uh, we came out with the Ghana Skills Enterprise Development Project and we realized that the faith-based organizations have the people. They are in touch with the people, whether the Christian community or the Islamic community, they are in touch with the people. So if government wants to reach out to the people, then we have to go through the faith-based organizations to be able to reach out to those who are very vulnerable and we can be able to provide the needed support to. That is why government told us why that this project I need to be able to partner the faith-based organizations who also partner with government in development. Before the project commenced uh, last year, we, uh, that is from November to December, we are expecting that uh, these faith-based organizations, it was a critical point. Most churches were not meeting, there was an election, and we were thinking, how do we do it? But they were also very innovative. The faith-based organizations were very innovative in reaching out to their people, how we can be able to uh, group them in smaller units and provide them with the needed skills. 
So where we had a huge expectation that at least uh, we could have uh, thousands of uh, young men and women through the various faith-based organizations to be trained with very good skills and giving some uh, startup kits for them to be able to earn a living for themselves. This project of uh, the Ghana Skills Enterprise Development Project that we are doing through the faith-based organization is not going to be a, just a nine-day one. That government is committed to ensure that we can be really able to reach out to those who are also having difficulties in terms of building their skills, in terms of acquiring entrepreneurship skills. So there's a plan for it to be able to ensure that within the years ahead, we can be able to sustain this project. So if you look at the budget, recent budget, which was where we have the Obatampake uh, project, the budget, um, a six, uh, the, the, this project has been factored into so we can continue to build the skills of the youth through the various faith-based organizations that we have in the country. And when you look at the beautiful things uh, that these youth, young men and women have been taking through in terms of the skills, uh, we are sure that there's a future for it. This is a total impact investment that we believe that we can achieve through the faith-based organizations. We want the faith-based organizations not just see that this is something coming from government, so how it happens. We are very happy with all the faith-based organizations that have been involved in this project. And all of them have taken the project as their own. So they are owning the project. They are even adding up resources to enrich the program. So we we'll continue to urge all the faith-based organizations. Put yourself into it. And if even government budget is not up to, we believe that the churches can also add up, the mosque, the various uh, organizations can add up to whatever government brings for us to be able to reach out to these vulnerable in our society. When it comes to human capital development, we need to be able to go beyond our political differences and our religious differences and put our hands on them. I'll urge all Ghanaian youth out there, look, get to your church, get to your religious body, get to your mosque, and acts of this project. And if it has not gotten to your area, I am sure that within the next couple of months, it will get to your area so that we can be able to also benefit. It is for Ghanaians, and we need to make sure that we see this working for all of us. Fulfilling the mandate of this partnership, we recruited professional trainers who trained the participants in beads making, baking, soap making, interior decoration, plasterboard, 3D epoxy, and biodigester. Some trainers took some of the trainees to their project sites to have a practical experience with the opportunities for the internship after the training. After the whole training, I contacted our facilitators if I could have a site feeling of the whole program, which they agreed to, so here we are. I would say a whole lot of things happen on the site as compared to the class. Because on the site you are able to get how they get the straightness of uh, the boarding and then how the shadow is created. Even though I'm not part of the scheming department, but I noticed that it, is, it, it gives beauty to the whole thing. Some trainees shared their excitement after they benefited from the project for days with all the practical experiences. <laughs> other trainees commended the government and urged them to do more of such projects for the youth as well as to boost the economy of the country. This skill training was once a dream, being it the bead making. As you can see in my hand, I did this necklace 
on my own and this hair vine. This bead making is one lucrative business that if every youth is to in, get involved in it, it's going to be a, a good ending business. And I really want to say a big thank you to GPCC and Ghana government. If they are to make this program a monthly something, I'm sure the youth are going to get something to do. God bless GPCC and God bless Ghana government. Very soon I hope that my small scale business will be very big so I can employ some people in addition. And I would like to thank GPCC in collaboration with the government for making this opportunity for us. Mm, it's such a great opportunity and like, I would like to thank them, God bless them. And we hope that they continue to do more for us so that there will be so many jobs in the country. Because now that there is this COVID-19, two point hours having nothing to do. So we thank them, they've done a lot for us and we hope that they continue to do more. Participants had intensive training so they could start up their own businesses. Some were trained for one month while others did one week and another did three days to ensure they came out as professionals. Some trainers shared with us some of the experiences during the training and what government should expect from them. My name is Joyce Kukui Menyaovo. I'm Mrs. Aheto. I am a trainer for soap making and bleach making. I train about 70 plus students for this session. All my students were so cooperative, they enjoyed the lesson and they've promised me they are going to make good use of whatever I've taught them. I realized that most of my students that came were not working. They were not working, doing anything at all. So with this one, they promised me they are going to take it up, they are going to work. So that to go on to help the whole economy. I pray the government in collaboration with the church brings up more ideas so that we'll be able to support those who are home doing nothing. I think this project is going to help take people off the street and empower them. It was a nice experience teaching people and I feel very fulfilled imparting knowledge because I'm very passionate about what I do now. And what I, I will tell the, the trainees is that learning a skill, no one can take it out from you. You will have it forever be yours. So make good use of it. They will have to practice what they were taught. Practice, practice and get it right. And then start a business to earn income. You have to work with it. The challenge I had was with language barriers. Some couldn't speak the English language and some couldn't speak the, the Ghanaian language that I was going to use, the tree. So what I had to do was, after explaining everything in English, I had to go back and use the local language to explain it again. And secondly, some couldn't even write their names. So what I had to do was, they had phones that had videos. So they recorded the procedure, you know, baking is step by step. So if you miss one step, you miss the whole thing. So that was the challenge I had during the training. I noticed that most of them wanted more of the, what they were taught. So I advise that more of such training should be organized so they can also add more value in terms of money to their lives. After the training, we provided them with startup kits and in less than a month, some have set up their own business registered under the Registrar General's department as they contribute to formalization of the economy. This training has really impacted me. I will say a big thank you to them for making this platform available for everybody who is interested or not interested to join at the end, have a career on his or her own. Reverend Emmanuel Barrega is the General Secretary of the Ghana Pentecostal and Charismatic Council. He shares feedback from church leaders on the future of the project. We have received very, very favorable responses from uh, our member churches. Uh, many of them have come out to express their gratitude uh, at the fact that uh, a lot of burden has been taken off their shoulders. Uh, before this training program started, they have had to uh, seek ways and means of helping their youth. Uh, to get some uh, work to do 
and it has not been easy at all. Uh, but with the provision of these skills that the youth have acquired, the hope that their youth will now be able to uh, find some job for themselves and also earn a living, which will take a lot of burden off the shoulders uh, of the churches. Uh, indeed, they have promised to follow up on the youth who have gone through their training uh, to ensure that they put their skills that they have acquired to good use. So we have received very favorable response from uh, our member churches. Uh, for the 3D epoxy installation for the biodigester uh, project and also for the plasterboard, some people came as far as from the north uh, to participate in the training program. In addition to that, the Assemblies of God Church, uh, which is one of the uh, four founding member churches of the council, also has uh, training outlets in various places in the nation. Uh, we also engage them to train some of these youth. Uh, so uh, some people from the rural areas have uh, benefited from the project. But we hope that in the future, uh, we will be able to send the program to their doorsteps. This time they have had to come down and you know they have had to travel to be able to go to the program. But we hope in the future we'll be able to take it to our rural areas so that they can benefit directly. Well, we are appealing to the government uh, not to make it only a one-time project, but also to think about making it a long-term project where uh, maybe every year uh, the government in its budget will allocate some amount of money uh, devoted to the training of our youth in our churches and uh, when we do that we would be reaching out to about 70 percent of the youth population in the nation uh, because according to the last population census conducted in 2010 uh, christians form about 70 percent of the population in in the nation so if you are able to reach the, the youth through the churches will be able to reach about 70 percent of them so we want to pray the government uh, to make it a long-term project and to make it a sustainable one by devoting part of the annual budget to uh, this particular partnership. Well, as I've said, some of them have promised we want to ask all of them to follow up on the people who have gone through the training from their individual churches and ensure uh, that they don't go to sleep with the training that they have acquired but that they will put whatever skills that they have been, uh, that have been imparted to them to good use uh, so that they can make a living for themselves and also cater for uh, their families and also be able to contribute something towards the building of the church. Well, we want to thank the government of Ghana for this uh, partnership. Uh, we think it's a very good initiative. In fact, this is part of the broader partnership that the government has entered into with faith-based organizations, uh, where, uh, of which a memorandum of understanding was signed at the end of 2019. So we hope this will continue so that the church can also play its role in the socio-economic development uh, of the nation. And for, uh, for that, we want to assure the government that whatever funds are invested through the church will be properly uh, accounted for as we have done with this particular project as well. A pastor from Global Evangelical Church who was also beneficiary of the project also revealed how the project has impacted his church and members positively. The Tivet project which um, many of our church members took part has really really impacted the church. Um, when we talk about the church we're basically looking at our members and Having gone through an era where many of our members were impacted negatively because of COVID-19, when we heard of this opportunity, we knew that this was the right time to be equipped. I believe that this is a very good project. Honestly, for the government financing the training of our churches, especially our young people, it's a very laudable idea. And we want to, I want to say that it should be a project that should be sustainable. 
so that more young people, especially in the rural areas, can benefit from what we are privileged to be in Accra, can benefit from this project. So we want to encourage even government that this project should be sustained. And when it's sustained, it should be expanded to cover many parts, especially the rural areas of our country. I want to encourage the beneficiaries that since they were trained for free, they should also find a way of training others who can also benefit from this free of charge. By this, we are equipping young, more young people for national development. The coordinator of the entire project also shares his experience, challenges, and the game plan of the entire project. Project of this magnitude will certainly come with a lot of challenges, but some of the few challenges uh, we encountered were one, uh, the very high expectations from applicants. Um, we had so many applications coming in within the shortest time that we sent out the applications. And we had to deal with that, which was quite um, enormous for us. GPCC having about over 200 member churches, we had to rely on that strong network of member churches. So we communicated to the member churches to mobilize their young people who were unemployed and who were available. And then within three weeks, we had over 2,000 applications coming in. And then we had to also put in place a very good planning process. Because it was just a two-month project, uh, sometimes you may ignore certain things, but it is very important in planning not to take things for granted. So we did a lot of planning. We took almost one and a half months to do the planning. And once we had a good plan, the implementation just took us about three to four weeks. And I think that was what we did in terms of the process and to start the training. And then the other experiences that we had but that we were flexible in the implementation, um, taking on board new ideas. Uh, one example was that we never thought about the issue of um, helping trainees to register their businesses. But once it came up during the training, we were able to smartly look for somebody from the Registrar General to come in every week to take them through an hour of business development and business registration training. I think it really worked for us. And for me, that was one of the things, the outcomes that we actually didn't plan for, but we had to be flexible to bring that on board. Yes, one unique thing about this project is that about 90% of our participants were on social media, one form of social media or the other, mostly on WhatsApp platform and Facebook. So we have been able to put them into groups and they are all on WhatsApp giving us updates on what they are doing. And so daily we are able to monitor what they are doing and we are able to provide after training support to them. And this is very effective. And we also intend to use our member churches, especially our pastors, because they come from individual churches. And we have the list of the members and we have the contact numbers of the pastors. So we intend to contact the pastors regularly to update us on what their members are doing with the skills they have acquired. And we intend to have a long-term monitoring system in place so that we can monitor them for a period of not less than two years. And we should be able to report on progress. One unique thing we did was that, apart from the fact that we don't just train them and leave them to go, but we add startup tools that as soon as they finish, they'll be able to hit the ground running. And then the aspect of the business development and business registration was one thing that I thought or we thought as a project team was very unique. That at the end of the day, our trainees will not just get out there just to go and produce, but they should have a business plan, they should have a business mindset, and they should be able to even register their business. And we are foreseeing that once they begin to register their businesses, they are gradually formalizing the economy, which is at the heart of government agenda to make sure that we move away from informal business to formal business. We think that this particular approach in the long term will also help us to formalize the economy. We strongly believe that Tibet remains the country's hope 
of reducing the high level and widespread poverty, youth unemployment and social vices. This partnership is the strongest indication of the partners, church and government's commitment to reducing youth unemployment in Ghana through a strong church-government collaborative Tibet investment. <music>